are now tuned in to the Meesey Muse Unplugged, a pop-up podcast variety show helping consultants along their journey to greatness with your host, management consultant, author, and blogger, Christy Lindor. go-getters. Welcome to the Missy Muse Unplugged podcast show. For episode 28, we will be doing a segment that I call Quick Wins. And if this is your first time tuning in, Quick Wins is when I have the utmost pleasure to connect with individuals sharing ideas, products, or services to help round out your consulting toolkit. Today's guest, we've got intuitive advisor Lynn Robinson, she is also a best-selling author and one of the nation's leading speakers on the topic of developing and trusting our intuition. And go-getters, if you actually check out our website, go to mecemes.com today, look at the show notes for episode 28, you'll get a copy of her ebook. It's called How to Listen to Your N-O CEO. So you can check that out. Um, in today's conversation, we're really cool, she provides a three-step technique that you can actually use now to begin really harnessing and owning your intuition. But before we get started with our conversation with Lynn today, a couple of announcements to round out the year. Uh, Today's episode is actually going to be our last one for 2017. We actually will start back up, um, Missy Mies will start back up on January 5th. So wanted to make sure you are aware of that. And if you check out today's show notes, you can also get your copy of the Macy Muse Manifesto of Great Consultants, which is also a great addition to your toolkit and go-getters. Um, that link is also in today's show notes. And the manifesto is actually a copy from, it actually comes directly from my book, The Macy Muse. So you can check that out and start putting that to action today. Let me know what your thoughts are about the manifesto. Um, you know, you can definitely drop us a line, mecmuseunplugged at gmail.com. Last announcement for today, we also, uh, we're still running our feedback survey. So thank you so much for go-getters that's provided some feedback to us. As I've mentioned the last couple of episodes, uh, we are running a six-week improvement study. Really want to get feedback on the podcast show and how we can improve. So uh, feel free to take our survey. It's on our website as well. Or you can drop us a line as well. We'd love to hear from you either or. Anyway, we can really improve the show. We've got some exciting guests lined up for 2018. I can't wait to, uh, to begin that. So uh, with that, I want to, you know, I want to take a moment and wish you and your family a happy holidays, happy new years, and we will see you in 2018. So with that, let's get started. Lynn, thank you so much for taking time to connect with us on the Musi Muse Unplugged. How are you doing oh, today? Nice. I'm great. And it's so nice to meet you, Christy. Thanks for having me on your show. Absolutely. So before we get started, uh, Lynn, maybe if you can take a moment to introduce yourself to the go-getters of the Missy Muse Unplugged. Great. Well, thanks for the opportunity. I'm the author of seven books, all on the topic of intuition. The, my latest book is called Put Your Intuition to Work. And I've had my business. Oh, this is going to really date me and make me sound very old, but it's I'm for almost 30 years. <laughs> and I work as an intuitive advisor, which, and I was joking with Christy earlier, sometimes I wish I was an accountant or something really normal so that when people ask me what I do, they would get it immediately. But I'm an intuitive advisor. So people usually call me when they're in the midst of change and transition and trying to figure out next steps or getting some insight into a client or a product that they want to have some information about. And I use my intuition and I hopefully help you use yours to kind of figure out what the next steps are, what might be standing in the way or some insight that you might not be able to get on a logical or rational level. And what I think is so great about your, you know, you being an intuitive advisor, I know for myself, Lynn, I, you know, I was sharing with you that I rely on my intuition quite a bit. And I've realized over the years that, you know, as a consultant, the more I listen to my intuition, it gets louder. But I notice that Mm. I'm able to have better answers. I have better clarity with decisions that I make. And I'm able to really help my clients more with, with a little bit more kind of breadth and depth 
to the recommendations I provide. And so I do that more. And it's funny, it's like, you know, more intuitive thinking begets more intuitive thinking. And I, I never realized how powerful intuition was. And so when I heard about your, you know, your book and your, your expertise, I was like, wow, I really want the go-getters to kind of get, kind of understand like how they can really tap into their own intuition. So, so like, I guess before we, we talk about intuition, just as a topic, how did you get into this type of work? Maybe let's start there. <laughs> Well, it's a very weird story. I was actually the operations manager of a software company in Boston. And I'm sure your listeners are real kind of familiar with this this kind of event. But I, I just, you know, I know that it wasn't what I wanted to be when I grew up. I was just feeling really bored. I was just, it just wasn't what I wanted to be doing. And I went to see a career coach during that time. And I said, you know, I don't know what I want to do. I know that I like, I would like to be an entrepreneur. I would like to be helping people. Everything was so vague. I thought about being a psychologist, but I didn't want to go back to graduate school. So I was just really perplexed. And during that time, I went to take a class on intuition development, and I discovered that I was really good at it. I mean, people, we kind of did these partner exercises in the class, and people would say, oh, my gosh, how did you know that about me? How did you know about that situation? Oh, my God, that information is so spot on. And I was like, wow, really? And so I went back to my career coach the next week, and I said, I said, is there something I can do being at like an intuitive advisor? And, and I said, you know, and then I just kind of discarded it because it was too weird, and I kind of joked that it wasn't the kind of ad that you found in the Help Wanted section of the Boston Globe newspaper. And she actually was one of those very early adopters of using visualization and affirmation kind of law of attraction, which I'm sure a lot of our listeners are familiar with. And so she said, you know, don't discard this idea. Just imagine yourself having a successful business. Imagine your appointment book full of clients. Imagine that you've got a beautiful office. Imagine you've got happy clients. You know, maybe you can imagine yourself as a speaker. So I did all of that. And, and for several weeks, I was doing it. You know, nothing really happened. Happened. And then what happened next was so strange. I always kind of strange to talk about it, but I, a friend of mine died and I went to his funeral. There's several hundred people in, in the, at the service in the funeral home. I was going to sit next to a couple of my friends, but I walked in and I heard a woman say, um, please sit there. And so there was a woman sitting next to me that had an empty seat. And so I sat down and I'm thinking, boy, that's really strange that there's seating assignments at a funeral. And I turned around to look at the woman who I thought had said this. There was no one there. So I still don't know what that was about. I don't know if it was my intuition or something else. But at the end of the service, this woman and I that I was sitting next to started chatting. And she said, what do you do for a living? Well, I was the operations manager of a software company, but I ended up blurting out, I'm an intuitive advisor. And I, I had not intended to say that. I was kind of mortified. I embarrassed. <laughs> and, and I ended up giving her a session the next week. And I was so nervous. Oh, my gosh. It was the first time I'd really given a reading to a stranger outside of the class. And at the end, I said, you know, I didn't really ask you what you do for a living. And she said, oh, I thought I told you I'm a writer for the Boston Globe newspaper. And she wrote an article about me. And I got 500 clients in the next month. <laughs> oh, MG, Lynn. <laughs> I know. I know. It was a total law of attraction manifestation story. And I'm such a big fan of that, of uh, using those skills of affirmations, visualization, getting clear what you want, and then using your intuition. So, I mean, it was really a great story because it illustrates all of those pieces of it. Wow. That is, I think that's like one of the best stories I've heard on the podcast show. Oh, <laughs> so thank far. you. Gosh, I feel good now. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's amazing. I think that's it's so amazing. amazing. Yeah, it, yeah, it definitely is. Yeah. Well, now I'm excited. Okay, so let's let's unpack kind of what intuition is for our listeners that may be listening to both of us and saying like, okay, what are they talking about? So maybe what are they talking about? Yeah, yeah. Let's, let's, let's kind of maybe take it a step back and maybe, you know, Lynn, we can start by you sharing your definition of what intuition really means. Yeah. Well, the dictionary definition, which is probably the most boring one, is quick and ready insight. And my actually my favorite definition is what from a 15 year old girl and she said intuition is like when you know something but like where did it come from <laughs> my own definition is intuition is like our inner ceo our inner gps i believe it's something that we're all born with it's and people call it by lots of different names their instinct their gut feeling their intuition their inner wisdom their inner guidance you know some people think of it as a spiritual thing that it's it's god 
God or a spirit guide if you want to get a little new agey about it. But I believe it exists in absolutely all of us. And it really doesn't matter what you call it or even how you receive it, because we all receive it in different ways. Some people get that still quiet inner voice. That's one of the main ways we hear about intuition. I frankly wish it would turn up the volume quite a bit. Some people get it as that gut instinct. You're about to make a decision and your stomach cramps up or your shoulders get tight. I mean, sometimes it's a different physical sensation than just a gut feeling. Other people describe it as a knowing. It's kind of like an aha moment, like, oh, that's a good idea. And I bet that's what you find happens a lot in your consulting business is that you're working with something, somebody and, and an idea just pops in your mind or you have a feeling about something and or an idea might emerge. And all of those are intuition. And it is kind of hard to talk about it because it, it's very ephemeral and it's very intangible. But as you said, and I'm giving you an A plus for this one, Christy, that the more you use it, the better you get at it. So you tend not to doubt it so much anymore. It just becomes, okay, what's my gut say? Or what's my intuition saying? Or you just start to access that. And I think it really, it's a part of us that really helps us make successful decisions and have a happy life. You know, one of the the main ways I like to describe it because people often say, I, you know, I don't get that inner voice or I don't get those knowings. A very basic way of, of trusting your intuition is if something feels exciting, interesting, energizing, you're curious about it, that's your intuition saying, go in that direction. And, it, and the, con, the opposite is true too. That if you feel drained, you're bored, you're enervated, you're procrastinating some, like, some, like crazy about something, that's usually your intuition saying there's something off here. You know, don't go towards it or move away from it. And I think that's really good advice probably for all of your listeners who are thinking about a career. It's like if you, you know, if somebody's saying to you, oh, you know, you really ought to be a doctor or you really ought to be a lawyer or you ought to be an Indian chief, you know, and it just feels like that's not what you want. And, and you know, maybe it makes logical sense because, you know, maybe a lot of the things you're thinking about make money or they're well thought of in our, our culture. But if it doesn't make you feel excited or energized or you can't imagine a life doing that, then that's your intuition saying, don't go there. And I always tell people, listen, if I can make a living doing what I do, you can make a living doing anything. So I had to really trust that intuition myself to say, there's something here besides being the operations manager of the software company. And I'm not quite sure what it is going to, but I'm going to follow the clues. You know, what's so interesting about what you just shared, Lynn, I, it behooves me how much people fight that. So, you know, you mentioned earlier that it is it is an innate kind of it's kind of an innate skill we we all have as as human beings yet time and time again i think about i mean the number i feel like hundreds of conversations i've had with mentees or people on my my team or even friends and family and you know if something happens or goes awry they'll say well you know what i should have listened my gut told me and for you know whatever reason they they trusted rationale versus their mm-hmm. gut they trusted the facts versus their gut. They trusted, you know, seeking approval versus their gut. Why do you think that happens? You know, I think it's human nature that we want to be in control and we want to guarantee a positive outcome. And so when we go with what's worked for everybody else or what the culture values, it may seem like we're going after a sure thing. And yet I think we're all so individual. And what works for me does not work for you. I remember working early in in my career with this woman who was a very left brain coach. And she's like, you know, here's the marketing thing you have to do. And you have to go out here and you have to do X number of speaking engagements. And you have to do this and you have to do that. And I just, you know, for about six months, I did exactly all that she said. I was so burnt out and fried. I just wanted to throw in the towel. I don't really want to do this anymore. And what may surprise people, because I know I don't sound like an introvert, but I really am. You know, all of those things that she was suggesting were very extroverted things. Now I can do that. I can play an extrovert. But I really love writing. I love counseling. I love consulting. I love talking on the phone with people. I can give a good speech, but it's like all of those things were my intuition saying, this is going to be the way for for your success. It's not going to be out there going to, you know, six networking meetings every week or, you know, being glad handing everybody. So I had to really pay attention to my own intuition. And 
one of the ways I think we can develop it is by asking our intuition questions. I mean, I think a lot of us believe that intuition simply comes unbidden. You know, it's like, oh, you know, here's here's what you should do. But often it comes when you've asked a question. And one of my very favorite techniques is just to, you know, it doesn't take a, you know, half an hour, hour of contemplating your navel or something. It can just be, you know, pushing yourself away from your desk or finding a favorite chair at home, closing your eyes, thinking about what you want information and insight about, and simply asking or saying, you know, I need more information about this, or what's my right next step, or what do I need to know? And then just being quiet for a little while. I like keeping a pad of paper beside me I, and a pen. I kind of do it the old-fashioned way that works for me better than being on the computer for some reason. That may be different, different for other people. But I keep a pad of paper and a pen. And then whenever I just get a little insight, a nudge, an aha moment, I just write it down. And I try to take some small action step, if not a big one, based on the guidance I'm receiving. Now, everybody doesn't get it right away like that. Sometimes it comes later in the day. It might come as a dream. Um, you might have the aha moment later, you know, later in the afternoon. You might get drawn to a magazine article or you might hear a podcast. It's almost like your intuition wants to answer the question. It will put information in your path or in your heart and mind to answer your question. I agree definitely with a lot of the techniques you use. And it's funny, I'm an introvert as well. And it's funny, people don't think I am because I have yeah. a podcast, but I'm very similar as well. And I know for me, what I find sometimes now that I, I do listen to my intuition quite often, I notice like if I keep asking a question, and I haven't had the answer manifest, I realize sometimes I have to double back and ask myself, am I asking the right question? Yeah. And I like asking open-ended questions like, what do I need to know? Or what's the right next step? Instead of, should I take this job? Yes or no? Or, right. or you know, because I think when you just ask a yes or no question, you get a yes, you know, you might get a yes or no answer. But when you're asking open-ended questions, you get a lot more information. And sometimes it takes time. I mean, intuition is like any skill. The more you use it, the better you get at it. And I think you you kind of alluded to that earlier, that as you pay attention to it and you act on it, you, the information will start to come in, you know, more clearly, more directly. Today's episode is brought to you on behalf of the Misi Muse, a hundred plus selected practices Unwritten Rules and Habits of Great Consultants, a book by Christy Lindor. Written in the voice of a mentor, the Misi Muse provides insights on the unwritten rules of great consultants, a perfect breed for new or aspiring consultants. Christy dives into her 15 plus years of consulting experience while sharing interviews and anecdotes from over 50 consulting partners and leaders that represents thought leadership from 80% of the top 10 consulting firms in the world. Pre-sale begins shortly. Sign up at www.macymuse.com. So I like the open-ending questions. I actually never thought to have a like a, almost like a journal of of mm -hmm. things. I mean, I, I carry journals, but I never thought to do that for intuition questions. So that's a it's a really great technique, Lynn. So what about if we have one of you know the go back getters are listening to this and I was like. This sounds great, but they may be like new to this idea and they want to figure out a way to kind of begin developing their intuition into kind of their, their consulting style or into their, their work style. Like, what are some of the first steps you would say like a person should take to kind of go down this journey? Well, I think, first of all, it's asking those questions. I believe also, you know, kind of like that, what that funeral story illustrated, being really clear about what you want, not how you're going to get there necessarily, but what you want. So before I go into a consulting, you know, with a client or before I give a talk or a speech, I always try to think, what's the perfect outcome? Like if I get go away from this and I, and I feel really good about it, how do I feel? You know, what does success look like? So I actually have a three-step technique that I do. And I think of it as sort of my intuitive business plan. So the first part is what I was 
just describing. Get as clear as possible. What does a successful life look like to you? You know, if you're a consultant, how many clients do you have? How much money are you making? What does your office look like? What kind of car do you drive? I mean, all, put all the factors in as much as possible. As some people create a vision board, cutting out pictures from magazines or, you know, do you can even, there's a lot of ways to do it online to just have a really strong picture of what does successful look, look like to you? And then the second part of this technique is the visualization part. And, you know, I, I wish there was a different word than visualize, because to me, it's really more about the emotion of something rather than just being able to picture it. But maybe they kind of go together. So the practice that I do when I usually do it when I get up in the morning, I close my eyes. And this always sounds so weird when I say it, but I do it inside my head. And I just sit, I talk to myself as if I already have what I want. So if you have a consult, you know, somebody who's listening that wants to develop a consulting practice, it might sound like, wow, you know, I'm just loving this work. My clients are really responding to me. I'm getting a lot of consulting contracts. You know, I'm really enjoying the travel that I'm doing. You know, things are really opening up really easily. I'm finding a lot of opportunities coming my way. And so I will just talk to myself in that way. And then before I open my eyes, the third and final step is to just say, what three things can I do today to move in this direction? And I just try to pay attention in asking that what pops in my mind? And again, what feels enticing or I'm curious or I'm energized by it? And it doesn't need to be a big thing like write a book. It can be, you know, write on my blog, send an email to Christy. <laughs> That's what, that was one of the intuitions I got a few weeks ago. I said, send an email to Christy and I acted on it and here I am. But it's just, it can be really small things. It can be making a phone call. It can be go to, go to that networking event, do an informational interview, do some research. I mean, anything that comes to you that feels, again, enticing, interesting, energizing, that's your intuition. So I think that that's my intuitive business plan. I really, I think my business doesn't necessarily, it doesn't always lend itself to a more formal business plan, but that one's worked for me for 30 years. So that's my favorite technique. And, you know, I find that's really helpful technique. You know, who can't do three things a day and prioritize it? Or B, when I'm stuck, I was like, oh gosh, I just don't know what to do. And I can usually think of three things to do. It's just a really great next step for me. I love the three step technique. So thank you for sharing that. You know, earlier in the episode, Lynn, you mentioned your book, Put Your Intuition to Work. And it, you know, it sounds like, you know, the three step technique sounds like a great kind of initial framework. Maybe share a little bit more about, you know, about that book. And, you know, what are some things that people can, if they're interested, they can look forward to in, in your book? Yeah. You know, what I did in the book, it's called Put Your Intuition to Work, and the subtitle's How to Supercharge Your Inner Wisdom to Think Fast and Make Great Decisions. <laughs> I love that. I love offering people practical techniques to use. So the book is a combination of people that I interviewed that were successful, that are successful in business, and how they've used their intuition. And it's just filled with lots of techniques. So if some of the ones that Christy and I have been you know, discussing don't work for you, there's tons of them like how to develop an intuitive creative team or what should you do when you need to make a creative decision fast or even one of my other favorite techniques is getting information while you sleep. <laughs> but the other chapter that I find that people respond to a lot, I have a whole chapter in here about for people who are in sales and it's a profile of an intuitive sales pro and lots of techniques that I used when I was in sales. So I think you might find some of those interesting. Also on my website, I have a lot of quizzes and articles based on the book. And I know we're doing a giveaway of, of uh, how to listen to your inner CEO. That's a free ebook that we're offering your listeners. So there's lots of techniques in it. I have to t share with you one story that, that always was one of my favorites in the Put Your Intuition to workbook. Uh, I had a guy that I think it was a big advertising company agency that he was running and they needed to get a chief financial officer immediately. They were, they were getting lots of business and definitely needed to fill that CFO position. And so he had his HR people and his, uh, some of his senior team interviewing a series of folks and they came up with this one guy that they really liked and uh, you know did a reference check and everything checked out and so they put him forward as the guy that they wanted to, to hire. And my the guy that I interviewed, I'll call him Tom. I can't think of his name. He, um, he said, every time I went to pick up the phone to offer him the job, I couldn't do it. 
And he said, it's so unlike me to be a procrastinator. I'm usually very definitive about things. And he said, I just went to pick up the phone. I couldn't do it. And he said, I've learned that when I procrastinate with something like that, or there's some resistance, there's a reason for it. And it's usually my intuition giving me a warning. So he said, I decided, even though we'd done a general background check and, you know, checking uh, his references, I decided to do a more extensive background check that had to do with financial background check. And it was very costly, but he said, you know, it was really worth it to him. So they did that. He found out that the guy had been convicted of embezzlement in three different states. Wow. I know. So that's one of the tricky things about intuition. It doesn't say, hello, warning, this man has been convicted of embezzlement in three different states. It just gives you a warning. Uh, something's off. Something, the energy's off here. The, you know, I get a gut feeling or I just, my shoulders tighten up or I just can't pick up the phone to make that offer. And it's pretty fascinating. I mean, there were so many people that I talked to and interviewed for the book that were really fascinating, that had very interesting, similar kinds of stories to tell like that. I've just found that really fascinating. And I, I mean, I just find it over and over again in my own life that when I pay attention to that and, you know, it's tricky because of the fact that it often doesn't tell you the why. <laughs> it right. just says, you know, don't do this or do that. And, and you're kind of left wondering. But I think having done this work and, you know, worked with people who really do trust their intuition over these many years that I've just found that when you trust it, as you said very clearly, you get better at it and you just go, hey, you know, my gut is telling me something here and I got to pay attention. So the other thing that I noticed a lot in interviewing people for the books, and I see this with my clients a lot, is people get scared about their intuition a little bit because it often leads them out of their comfort zone. It's, mm, you know, it often says so it's time true. to leave your job or it's, you know, or you, it's time to really have a serious conversation with someone or whatever. And we tend to discount it because we get scared. And so that's one of the other things that I, that I tell people a lot is just, you know, kind of feel the fear and do it anyway. I mean, I'm sure a lot of the people who are listeners on the call are really, you know, dreaming about a business that they love to have or work that they'd like to do, but it feels scary. And so often I hear people say, oh, I don't have the confidence. You know, I'm not that confident. And my feeling is you just feel the fear and do it anyway. And that's when the confidence comes. Oh my gosh, when I first started talking to all those 500 people that called me as a result of that newspaper article, I was a wreck. Honestly, Christy, I was crying in my office a few times before the client came in. You know, when are they going to find out? I don't know what I'm doing. It was really <laughs> scary. <laughs> and, you know, I mean, having done this for a while and being a little older now, you know, I recognize that that's a really human thing. You know, when you first start a job, it's scary and overwhelming. And especially if it's a professional job, you know, you start almost everybody, I think if they're honest, will go, oh, my gosh, am I going to be able to do this? You know, all these people are trusting me and I'm getting the salary to do this stuff. And am I good enough? So I'm just saying that because I think that, you know, I wish I had known that when I was younger, that it was pretty normal. <laughs> yeah. So funny, you, you know, you, as you're sharing that story, Lynn, I think about even the creation of this podcast was based on tuition. It was an in you know, an intuitive decision because I, up until like this past year, I was never on social media. I kind of, you know, I'm an introvert. I was very like, I, I wasn't about trying to put myself out there. And it was so funny. I had been writing my book for some time and I thought about a podcast show. And then in my mind, I was like, I don't, what do I know about a podcast show? Right. Like, I, you know, and I kind of put it away and I was like, yeah, I'll think about it next year. I'll think about it next year. And then in the course of like two, three months, I kept being put in situations for someone to mention a podcast show or to say something about, well, Krista, you know, you have a great personality. Maybe you should do a podcast show. And, and it just, it's so funny. It kept coming up and I kept pushing it away. And then yeah. I was like, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. Like, why does everyone keep telling me this? Why does this, these circumstances keep showing up? And then I started to kind of open, you know, just mentally. It wasn't even I did anything. I just mentally said, okay, well, maybe there's, there's something there. And I remember I ended up a couple weeks later, I ended up meeting a gentleman who owns a podcast network. And I told him about the concept. And it was just kind of like we were networking and hanging out, it had nothing to do with podcasting. And then it kind of came up and I told him my idea and he lit a fire under me. <laughs> he was like, you, he's like next year he's like you got to do this now Christy. and there was something about him saying 
you got to do this now. It was kind of like you were saying, like, it was that there was like a ding, 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 like in my head, like, you have to do this now. And literally seven weeks later, I launched my podcast. I, I knew nothing about podcasts. So wow, that's it, great. It, it was based on intuition. And it's funny, I, I have, I've, you know, I, I can't believe how much success the show has had. It's just amazing. So go getters is you're hearing the stories that Lynn shared about how her business got started. She shared the story about, you know, the gentleman that she knew that, you know, he had to kind of dig deeper to get to a, to get to kind of a, you know, uh, the, his feeling. I share the story about this podcast. Intuition works. It works. <laughs> You know, and you're illustrating something that's really important that I find over and over again about intuition is that when you start taking those small steps like you did going, well, yeah, maybe I could do a podcast. And it's like all of a sudden people start mentioning it. They start offering the doors start opening. And that's what I find over and over again when I'm going in the right direction. You know, things don't always manifest overnight. I mean, maybe that's the story that I initially told, you know, it happened so fast. Sometimes it takes a while, but I find that if I can start noticing people are mentioning it, it, somebody's offering help. I'm all of a sudden, you know, a book will drop out in front of me or I'll overhear something and it's all about this thing that I'm focused on. It's almost like the universe is saying, go ahead. You know, you've got the clear, go ahead, <laughs> go in the right direction. For sure. For sure. No, this is great. And, and go-getters will definitely provide you a link where you can download a copy of, of Lynn's book. I thank you so much for giving us this, this ebook. I think this is awesome. I think you're, oh, you're, cool. you've given us I like one of our first ebook gifts. That's great. <laughs> oh, oh, cool. Oh, terrific. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, good. This is yeah. Great. It's called how to listen to your inner CEO. So it's got a bunch of techniques in there, some of which we've discussed on the, on the show already, but I just love giving people practical tips because it is a little bit of an intangible skill set. And I think we should start teaching intuition in business school and in businesses. So Absolutely. I'm game. <laughs> Abs- I mean, you're spot on, Lynn. And, and I think Honestly, when I think about kind of the workforce of the future, so I'm, I'm, you know, in consulting and I'm in the human capital space, Lynn, mm-hmm. I think, I really, really think intuition is going to be a skill set of the future. Absolutely. From your lips to God's ears, Christy. Absolutely. So I love speaking about it. So, you know, I just, I think that's really fun. I love giving, I love going to conferences and talking about intuition. And I think that the business of the future is going to have an intuitive advisor on the staff. That's my prediction. And I'm sticking to it. (laughs) Yeah, I think that's a great prediction. And I, I mean, just kind of where things are going with, with disruption and AI, you know, with artificial intelligence. I mean, that's one of the, I feel like intuition is one of the distinct differences you know, differentiators that make us human and give us that human journey. And so absolutely, I believe I I cannot wait to hear about intuitive advisors and read them. And I'm like, yep, I remember when Lynn called it on my (laughs) podcast show. (laughs) You heard it here first. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) Absolutely. I love it. We're making, we're we're making history already. I love it. This is such a fantastic, fantastic conversation. Lynn. Like if people we're interested in getting a, in a hold of you. Like, what are some ways that they can they can reach you? Sure, my website's probably the easiest. It's Lynn L Y N N Robinson dot com, and on my website, I've got a bunch of eBooks that you can download for free. I've got a whole bunch of quizzes and resources to help you develop your intuition, and of course, I'm available for intuitive advisor sessions. So, I'd love to have people go there. Awesome. Well, this was such a pleasure, Lynn. I don't know if you have any kind of final remarks for the Go Getters. I would really just make today the start date for trusting your intuition and just checking in saying, what do I need to know? And really paying attention, taking five minutes at a time, just devoting it five minutes a day to really trusting that intuition and listening to the guidance, but also acting on the guidance that you receive. This was great. Thank you so much, Lynn, for being a guest on today's show. Thanks for having me, Christy. Awesome. And thank you, my go-getters, for tuning in today. This is Christy Lindor signing out for the Misi Muse Unplugged Pop-Up Podcast. Here's to your journey to greatness. Tune in every Friday for new episodes syndicated on iTunes, Google Play Music, and many more. Visit www.misimuse.com for more information. (laughs) 